Thank you all for making time. I appreciate it. Feel free to grab snacks as well. I do not want to repeat the last time when you stayed and didn't eat. <laughs> So it is half past six. Uh, so welcome to the June Design Review Committee meeting. I'm going to call the roll to confirm that our DRC members are present. So Mari Davis. Here. Um, Robert Dudka. Uh, Rebecca Meyer. Here. And Andy Wetchell. Here. Okay, so DLC meetings are held in person and streamed simultaneously to allow commissioners, applicants, and the public to attend online. For those joining us this evening, um, our meeting is available to stream on the county website, and there's also a dial-in phone option. If you lose internet connectivity, feel free to reconnect with us by phone. Applicants, please keep your devices muted and your video turned off until your item is under review. When called upon to speak, you may unmute yourself by the command bar. The meeting chat is active for participants who need technical assistance and not ready for questions. Uh, the public may observe the meetings, but participation in the discussion is limited to the applicants and the members of the HLRB. Public comment is welcome at the HLRB meeting, and information about signing up as a speaker or submitting a public comment for that meeting is available on the HLRB website. Finally, this is a public forum. Today's meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the county website. All information associated with today's meeting, whether written or spoken, is subject to the Freedom of Information Act requirements. Okay, so um, we have a long agenda, and I've just realized that uh, because it's not one. There we go. So let me pull up. Uh, our first item is a um, review of a window for a Colonial Village. So um, the commissioners saw this window at the end of the HLRB meeting last month, um, just as a... a an, um, an informal review item. Uh, the guidelines were developed in 2015 for Colonial Village, which is um, a number of condos in a historic garden apartment. And in order to streamline the application for new windows, we developed design guidelines, which um, broadly included um, guidelines which would allow a number of different windows. The windows currently in the structure are aluminium windows. They are not original to the um, building, and we identified that that material and those windows were not character defining to the historic nature of the property in that case. Um, until now, applicants have usually been applying for the uh, a specific window made by a company called Paradigm, um, and that window has been discontinued. They do not have a window that currently matches it, and therefore the Colonial Village Board has submitted a number of different options to us, and applicants also submitted some additional options to us. None of the windows currently that they have found meet the design guidelines. So any that we do, we are going to have to rewrite the design guidelines to meet those, which I'm working on right now, and then I will submit to the, the, the Colonial Village Board. However, the Board of Directors does have to sign off on these in addition to the HLRB being to be valid. And so um, Mr. Lockhart and his wife um, submitted uh, for some windows last year, and the um, the uh, window installer who said that they were going to comp comply with the dimensions. Um, and the the COA, the ACOA was submitted to them based on the idea that this, these windows would comply with them. They don't, and there's a sample here, Mr. Rockgren kindly brought his window in, you also saw it last week. Um, it is not, um, we discussed last week that this does not diverge uh, widely from the other windows that the HLRB thought were appropriate. Um, the only difference was that there is a slightly different profile from the mountain that was listed as appropriate in the original design guidelines. Um, and so the profile, there should be a, yes, so that is the profile. It is, I guess, a trapezoid. Um, there is not a name for this kind of a profile um, that I've been able to find. But um, so these are the, the drawings of the, or not drawings, this is an image with um, the dimensions and then these the drawing submitted by the window installer. Um, and so Mr. Lofgren and his wife have 
submitted um, to us to see if this window that does not comply with the 2015 guidelines could be approved for installation. You're welcome to join the table. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this is uh, <coughs> their proposed window, and these are some images of currently installed windows. If you would like to have a, a look, um, obviously, currently there are aluminium windows, and these uh, they are submitting for um, vinyl windows. Uh, vinyl is outlined in the design guidelines as an option, but uh, we've also discussed the possibility of fiberglass. Wood is listed in the design guidelines. Um, this is uh, one of this is one of the windows that was considered to be more appropriate of the selection that we looked at because um, the screen is flush with the frame, whereas the paradigm single hung that we looked at, the screen was inset. And then the profile, because there is a screen that is movable because it's a double hung window, um, there has to be a slight profile for the screen to go up and down, and it is less prominent on this than it was on the um, sunset or sunrise, whichever one of those it was, um, and the Marvin Ultimate. Oh, and so, so that one, so the one picture that Earth, Earthwise, Earthwise, mm -hmm. That one, the, that, that's, that's not that one. Yes, that is this, oh, okay. this, this exact one. Okay. That was the yeah. one that was included with the uh, documents online. Mm -hmm. this okay. yeah. So this is a close-up of this window. Yeah. I mean, I, as we sort of finished up discussing at the HLRB last, last time, I think that, the, I mean, the windows, I mean, they're obviously, everything differs from like the, like the current guidelines, essentially. I think that the difference is so the difference is so fairly minor. So I think that I think I would be in favor of entertaining that particular window. I mean, it is obviously it's, it's different. I mean, the, the profile, the heavy profile around the window doesn't. I'm not super excited about that. But that said, I think that that's 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 that's, that's also a bonus to the to the occupants that they can move the screen up and down, obviously. So um, I mean, I'm I, I'm, I mean, I, I'd be Favor of, of, of in that particular window. I mean, that's, that's just my two cents. Sort of given all the sort of matrix of windows and nothing really, really works out anyway, I think that that's an acceptable uh, solution essentially. Unless somebody can bring in one that actually it's you know it's, it's, it's the current um, existing um, existing uh, parameters. That's, that's the well, I like that. What is the width of the existing? Uh, the windows that are currently being installed, or the the windows that they have been the using. Windows are improved, because the, the rails and the stairs are. We're allowing up to more than a quarter inches, and this is how much. So this is the design guidelines that were approved in 2015. And so you're saying the styles are the meeting rails. So you'll see it goes up to a quarter, one and a quarter inches here. The problem is that we're not seeing none of the windows that, you, that were reviewed in the last meeting meet all of these criteria. It appears these windows are just not produced anymore. Um, and so that's why we are planning to update the design guidelines to include up to three and one eighth inches um, for the, the maximum range from the Edge of the glass to the edge of the frame on the top, and let me pull up the language and see. What but this was uh, within the parameters that we saw. We saw two other windows that were far away from it. So there was one where the meeting rail was far too narrow, and one where the um, the style on the bottom, oh no, the rail on the bottom was far too wide. Right. Yeah. And do you have anything to add? Also, I mean, well, I'm just. I just <laughs> I look at the pictures of the guidelines, and uh, these um, buttons on rails and styles are fairly thin, uh, much like 
when Windows what's being proposed, I think, is much wider. It's nearly double the size. But could you show the, the width of the so you're saying for the proposed uh, yeah, which part is? You look at those and it, the rails and the styles are much wider. Let's see what yeah. the fares to take. So they have not submitted dimensions. So it should be on the next page. Um, so the full mutton, including from edge to edge, is 70. I believe was in within the guidelines. The current um, ones that you'll find are five or like between five eight and six eight, something like that. So we kind of measured the ones that were on our windows to verify that. So the muttons are they're just, they're the same. I mean, in the earth wise, and then at, 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 as for the um, the, 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 the button, the button uh, width. Or the width, I think, is I mean, the profile. Is the profile that is the problem. Profile. Let's see. Width three quarters to seven eight is what is acceptable. Oh, okay, but one down. Okay, there. Those are obviously much wider. I think well, you have a picture of where it has the view measured. I think, well, if it's not. You're, you're saying yeah. those are. Seven eighths, they should be. I can go and get. I think the measuring tape is the correct. If there are seven eighths, I don't have a problem with it. Yes. It sure does look like it. It is. Much wider. Um, Rebecca? Um, I agree with everything that's been said. So, um, do we have a feeling about what kind of an agenda this could be? I think it's probably going to discussion. I'm not sure Discussion agenda with no currently no recommendation either way. Um, like, I mean, I would, I guess we were, we split on, so maybe, maybe not. Okay. I, I would recommend that. Andy, do you agree? Discussion agenda? I think so. I mean, I'd like to look at the window. I think it probably would have the window there. They want to review it. The whole board or take a look. That's I'm just saying the pictures certainly don't work. You think the images? I think either that or, or the ones we've got are much narrower. Than well, we have allowed from. What was it? A, a half? All the way up? No, three quarters to seven eighths. So it shouldn't be vastly different. So if they are looking very different, then that's in all likelihood because they're narrower than, than three quarters. I'm just looking at these photos. Right. But some of which may also be windows that were not, that were installed before the design guidelines. So they may not be. So these windows what are the actual least criteria? Um, let's see. So, I believe, yeah. so I believe these are since um, the local historic district. And then those, those are the paradigms. Yes. Okay. 
Agenda. That just means that the whole board will have to get to talk about it. Um, your item should be the first on the discussion agenda. So um, it would be like this, but a little bit more formal. You're welcome to come in person or attend online. Um, I will follow up with any questions, but I feel like we have all the materials we need. Unless, Andy, did you want more photos submitted, like the photos they just showed you? Um. I'm just, I realize what uh, I'm showing you in the dimension to it. It is here to be much narrower than what it's going to propose. I'm just looking at this look much more like uh, all those wood windows that are quite thin. I'm just saying, based on these photos. Perfect fit. Okay, well, I will send you information about the discussion agenda. Um, so it seems like the, the commission is currently are split, but um, I will let you, uh, I will give you the information about attending the next meeting, and then hopefully we will have an answer um, on June 21st. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. What are you done? So, next item is um, Alex Castro for Scott Pieter. Um, sorry, everyone, I forgot to wear my glasses, so I actually can't <laughs> see the screen, which is unfortunate, which is why I have to go through everything to check to see which is the right one. I got it. All right, good for me. Oh, dear. Um, okay, um, perfect. Um, Alex, do you want to walk us through the project or Mr. Pietan? Yeah, Scott, are you available? Looks like he's trying to join. I, 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 I am available. Uh, should I do the presentation on this? Uh, yeah, if you could, that would be great. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Hey, all. Uh, Scott Beaton, my wife, Mary Francis. Um, so, uh, if you guys can hear me, um, I think uh, so. Basically, this house is in Maywood. Um, back in 2018, we went through a historical. Uh, we worked with the people down in Richmond to get the uh, tax credits on historical renovation. That was the this first floor and the second floor, the sort of the historical parts, and that was great. We got the full tax credits and everything. Um, we didn't touch the basement as part of that process. Um, basically, it, it, as part of the process, we just had to demo the basement, but we left it unfinished because of because of money. So uh, we are going through the process now of uh, finishing the, ba the basement and looking at adding um, a back porch. Um, so I don't know if you have a picture of our lot, but basically the, the back of our yard is where we have most of the space. We are on a hill, and so we're looking at putting in a um, porch. Uh, it's kind of a north northeast facing um so we're gonna have go ahead scott so so it's kind of north northeast so we're gonna have uh we're hopefully gonna have a pergola that's not really so much for for um for shade but for it's gonna have this hopefully a little awning that we can pull down uh, in case of rain and that's that's the basically the plan i think uh the we're looking to replace the basement door it's not original I sent some pictures. Uh, we still have all the original windows in our house. We've restored 31 of the 37. Uh, we have the original doors on the first floor and, and, and on, the, on, on the, the front door in the kitchen, and those are in good condition. But the basement door is uh, from a renovation in 1980s, um, so looking to replace that. So maybe that's of worth. Um, so that's the scope of all the work. There should be the specs for the door. And can you remind me? I think you submitted two different doors. Um, one of which was just wood. 
Yeah, it should be, actually, actually, they all should be uh, 12 light like that. That's the front door, current front door. So it would be 12 light like that with the rectangle on the bottom. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a back door. It doesn't get a lot of there's no there's no real cover from elements. Um, so, you know, if we could put fiberglass or something back there, that would be great. But that's but but the but the look would be the 12 light over the the uh, square rectangle. Um, So you submitted the image of your front door just um, to show the example of what you'd like to replicate in the back, but yeah, it is just, just, yeah, basically the, the, we have the doors to. But I, I included the original doors to show that we still have the original doors on the first floor and in the kitchen, and I included the doors of the basement to show that they're not original. So I can you can go down and look at those, uh, the hinges, the I think the glass panes have a date, nineteen eighty four, on them. So anyhow, just showing you that that basement door, which hopefully you guys can get to, is not original. I am screening everything as you speak, so we are seeing everything. Um, and so you submitted to replace the basement window, I mean basement door, apologies, yes, that. Um, with, and you would prefer fiberglass with the 12 light. Sorry. Yeah, because yeah. of the elements, if possible, yeah. Okay. All right, so um, and do you have uh, an approximate square footage for that patio space? I don't. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Um, I don't have it. Let me. I can do a calculator for you really quick if you want. Um, sorry, I don't have that information offhand. And because of the pergola, this is going to be impermeable surface. Yes, that's the current design. Correct. But I mean, it's not because of the, well, I don't think it's because of the pergola, it's going to be impermeable, but it is, the surface is, yes. Um, any questions from the commissioners so far? Uh, just one big clarifying one. I think it be noted in, in our notes for meeting that the patio would be ACOA if, if it was under a certain size. Is that correct? Yes, or? and that's why. Um, it is being reviewed by you because it's going to be more of a change of future. And then because uh, I cannot approve pergolas um, administratively, and then the door replacement would go to continue. So um, I feel really bad for everyone to watch this recording. I'm sorry, I don't think the architect has put any measurements on this yet that I could give you an approximate size for the square footage of the patio area. So I'm seeing, I got really close to the screen, I am seeing uh, 18 feet by 17. And that is for the part under and then that new additional. There's yes, there are measurements on the drawings. Um, oh, okay. Oh. I'm sorry. I must be looking at the wrong um, version. Okay, so it's a retractable fabric. One of the there, the stone border. Do you have um, the flooring material natural stone? Um, do you know what papers you can? No, I don't think that's been decided yet. Okay. Um, that would be uh, information that we would need to know before we could um, review it. Is that something you could get to us in the next week? Um, I think, so. yeah, we could provide something, yes. Perfect, because uh, after this meeting, you have one week to submit updated information or any additional information that the Commission would like in order to uh, get that approval on June 21. You just can't approve it without that information.
information. There is a list in the design guidelines of uh, materials that have already been discussed as appropriate for Maywood. Um, you don't have to um, use those because you're coming to us for a COA, so you can use any materials you would like, but that might be helpful. Uh, we see a fair amount of bluestone. Um, let's see, I'm going to pull up larger images of the pergola. Yeah, so the, the patio would be about 570 uh, square feet in total. And so there's also the new, um, the natural stone coping. Is that tall enough to need zoning review? Um, you mean, is it over three feet? Yes. I... I'm not 100% sure. I I think it's probably close to three feet. Um, how is the pergola going to, is the pergola going to be attached to the building in any way? Yes, that is the, yes. the it's for it to be attached, correct. Okay. Um, do you have uh, information on how it's going to be attached? It, let me see. I thought I had that plan that had that. This rear part is a non historic addition. No. The pergola part? Uh, the part that the pergola is going to affix to. Is that? Yes, yeah, um, historical. Oh, okay. It is that there is there are no additions to the house uh, that would attach to the house. Yes. It would be helpful to know how you plan to anchor it into the siding. Okay. Since there are no. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's no. Okay, we'll have that information to you. I mean, was is there any um, concerns about anything else on the pergola or anything, or questions regarding that? Besides the how do, how it's attaching, how it anchors to the house. Uh, um. I would just want to make sure that um, what we are seeing is what you are planning to install because um, you can come back to us for uh, changes in the future before you do them, uh, but that would re require another review cycle. So um, if your plans have changed since you did these drawings, say that the uh, seating has moved. I mean, I don't know if that, that looks like it's actually movable seating, but say something has changed, I would update that now rather than coming back to us. Um, and it sounds like maybe some things have been changed. I, I mean, I think I just have I'm the for whatever reason, the one in my file is uh, the plans I have in my file are not the um, are actually different than what you have. And so you have the correct plans. Um, but this I mean, so. I mean, I guess I'm wondering, is there any concern about the pergola itself besides how it attaches? It does extend quite far from the house. I'm not sure what size of the around. Um, well, I mean, we allow any size. Um, there are no, I don't think there are ACOE yeah. guidelines for so, um, let me see on the site plan. They really have quite a long site. My, my only concern is the pergola does, in relation to the house, quite a large. Uh, it extends way back considerably. I don't have a problem with the warnings. And it is a very Property. And your 
uh, your property is flanked by buildings on both sides. Do, are you saying do we have neighbors on both of our right and uh, um, yeah we have neighbors on um, both sides of us we don't have neighbors in the back that's uh, Fillmore but we do have neighbors on the two sides of our house yeah okay so um, Laura how do you feel about the projected dimension of the building? It is a little it's deep I mean it's not a deal breaker per se but but I agree Andy it, it is a um, and then switching over to the, to the, to the door question, so in terms of our sort of precedence about um, doors, I mean, would in terms of the, so what, what we've done previously, I mean, our best door be acceptable at location, kind of it's based on what we've we approved previously, or? Um, I mean, I don't, I haven't checked, but I don't remember approving uh, replacement doors in historic parts of the house mm -hmm. that are fiberglass mm -hmm. or vinyl. I think I only remember um, wooden replacement doors in the historic portions of the house. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. okay. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Just given that, I think that that would that'd be an issue regarding the, the materiality of the door. I think the door profile, I mean, the door you know, profile of it, location door looks I think, but materiality would, um, would recommend or would push or would in that case. I would just going back to the the back. I would just there was a picture, an actual picture of the porch, current porch. So the 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 pergola is essentially going over what is the current size of the patio. If you want to get a sense of of the size, the house is pretty tiny. But if you go back to that picture. Um, Previously, with the the uh, paper stones, you could get a sense of of the area that the pergola would be over. That is the existing. Yeah, if you back up one more, I think it's you can get a better picture of that. Um, it would be helpful in that case. Um, the you do have an existing site plan. Having the dimensions uh, written on that would be helpful, just so we can do the. Um, we can see that it's the same ish footprint. I don't think that's on. Okay, so you want the dimensions on the current site plan of the existing patio? Yes, because I'm not seeing it right now. Okay. Um, you did ask, I'm sorry, you did ask about the those walls and they are um, going to be below three feet. They're okay. called out on the plans as low walls, so they should not be over three feet. Okay, thank you. That is helpful. So yes, if you could um, add those dimensions onto the drawing, calculate and, and send me that square footage you estimated, um, <laughs> and then give me the information about the materials and maybe uh, consider um, a wooden replacement door. Um, you do not have to submit a wooden replacement door in the next week. You can go through to the HLRB with the fiberglass, um, but based on precedent, uh, it's not something that we have, uh, that I remember that we've approved in the past. I will do research into that and that will be in my staff report. But, so you can go forward and just submit your fiberglass tool, or you can consider um, adding in the wood option, and that would mean that the entire uh, package could be approved possibly on, on June 21st. Okay, and um, the other thing we have on there is the, um, there is a gas generator on the plan on the uh, right side of the property. I think it's called out in, um, if you right here on your on the left hand side there. That is the oh on the back. OK, so yes. um, that is something yeah, I it's within that blue line. The in the on the left hand corner there is a um, for a gas generator. I just want to make sure that that's called out um, 
as also part of the request? Yes, and that is something that is um, that location behind the midpoint of the house is considered appropriate for the main design guidelines. So that I could either approve by ACOA, but in my staff report, I will state that that is. I'm sorry, it, it just the, the volume went off for a second there. Um, can you repeat that? Um, so in the Maywood design guidelines, generators um, and HVAC units placed behind the midpoint of a home are considered to be appropriate. Um, and so that is something that um, I can sign off on either as staff, but it, since okay. it's coming forward to us as um, a COA application, I will write in my staff report that it is a OK, thank you. And then um, then they will they also wanted to consider replacing the um, the existing concrete sidewalk that goes down to the um, garage. I just want it's good would be replaced with um, concrete. OK, so it's also. an existing concrete. It's an existing concrete walkway that's. Uh, um, that's considered an in guess, and, and you don't you don't need to do no it. issues. OK, thank you. I just wanted to make sure there was no questions about it if work was being done later after the fact. So OK, so I have all your notes and I mean, was there anything else? Was there any other questions? Um, about anything? Uh, doesn't seem like it, but I will have you on the discussion agenda. Yours is the second item. And so I will send you information. Obviously, you've attended many of the meetings, but I will send you information about attending. OK, well, that sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I think it is the one on the by right? Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, so we can yeah. just close. Yeah. Right. Um, OK. While I open this up again, um, Ms. Brito Bricard, are you on the line? Or uh, <laughs> Scott Brito is on the line. Yes, um, Carol is unavailable. Um, her husband. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I think we have an appointment to meet next week. Yes, hopefully. OK, here we are. Oh, all right, so you are applying to replace this basement door. It's on the side of your house. Um, it is deteriorating. Yes. Um, and this is a replacement door as it is, correct? Correct. Okay. It was replaced in 2003, you said? I think that's right. <laughs> that's a long time ago. But yeah, I think that's right. All right. And um, so, okay, so you can see. Is... Yeah, it's not this door here behind. Um, and two, so it is a uh, wooden door. Oh, no, it's not. It's described as mahogany, but they mean I would love to. Yes. Okay. And it is um, going to match the existing, except the existing has a board and batten inset. And it appears this is going to be a shaker double panel. Yeah, the the replacement door that is in there now was actually custom door. And in fact, this one is because it's not a standard size, height, or width. <clears throat> so um, in 2003, when we did that and we replaced the front door at the same time, we selected um, a different manufacturer. It's all, it was all wood. And um, and as you can see, being exposed to the elements as it is on that side of the house, it gets hit pretty hard. Um, that's kind of the general wind direction of heavy rains hit that side of the house hardest, and it bakes and and cools in the sun an awful lot um, as well. So it just it became a, a challenge. We've tried to repair that once, scraping the paint, um, putting in filler. Um, and it just continues to erode. Um, so we, we feel like we need a different material for it to last. I 
I take it it's on the side of the house? Yes, so it is. You can just about see it over here. Okay. Uh, next to the. Okay. Uh, no, I don't have Okay, so non historic floor. But, so let me just kind of get. I, again, profile wise, I have no problem with it at all. But so, I mean, is, is this house can contribute? Uh, the house is contributing, yes. It has been uh, highly modified since it was uh, listed as contributing in the Maywood nomination for the National Library. There was the, the Maywood nomination for the National Register, and then there was some time between that and the local historic district designation, and it was um, um, So I wouldn't, I mean, I guess, I don't know. It's vinyl siding, um, yeah. uh, vinyl windows. In oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. This is a this is replacement door. So, oh, yeah. Uh, we just, in, in the, Doors are okay, so that's kind of okay. I don't want to sort of tell. And I will check to yeah. see why staff. I don't know what the recommendation was in 2003, but I will check the minutes to find out why the door was approved for the basement. Okay. Yeah, okay. So that's okay. That was kind of, I don't want to be inconsistent sort of with how we apply it. I mean, I, I think, I think, I think functionally it makes sense to be fiberglass, but I also don't want to say fiberglass is okay here, but it's not okay. In I guess in the um, in the one we saw for just now. So, um, I mean, I guess I'm sort of logical with that. I guess I'm okay with it, but I but I I need to probably think about think about the way that we sort of apply things. I think it makes sense for, for it to be part of us, but again, I want to apply things. Well, I mean, as yeah. design professionals, um, what do you think about the quality of That application probably makes more sense for that particular application. I mean, that's at, at the base, you can sort of see that by wind and rain, and being on the side too, which you can't really, it doesn't take away from sort of the historic nature of the, of, of the neighborhood. I, I, I think, I think it's just. But then, I, I mean, it sounds like that argument holds. Well, I mean, it's not like yeah. yeah. So, do you think the quality of fiberglass floors? Visually, is if it's not textured, is becoming close to. Close to the manufacturer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I just want to make sure that we designed these design guidelines a long time ago. I want to make sure that we're still having conversations about whether the guidelines that we approved are appropriate and whether uh, technologies have made giant leaps. Uh, yeah. Because it's a difference between a wooden door from yeah. 1916, which uh, grew to maturity, then was cut down, then was age dried, right. and and this, which was built in 2003 for fun and has since rotted already. Right. right. This is just me on a soapbox about <laughs> modern wood. No, it's true. It's not the same thing. But how do you tend to? How do you feel about? That? Oh. I think that's a little bit green. I don't think much of it. But I find a relatively smooth finish. I don't really find on the side of the ocean, so I don't really want to see that. The front door is protected by I'm I'm sorry. I I can't hear whoever is speaking. Could would you mind um I said I had no problem with the uh, your proposal, as long as the floor, the fiberglass floor, does not have a simulated wood grain. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't believe it does. 
Um, okay, well, uh, it sounds like this use which yeah, agenda. For professional articles, I think. Also, I think she had it. Yeah, so just you um, I think let's put it on. Um, I'd be fine to put it on uh, consent. I almost take nothing to get off. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Uh, Rijo, I will uh, contact you about um, your project. I have all the information I need. You, um, the commissioners, think you could be on the consent agenda. Um, consent agenda items are voted on en masse at the beginning of uh, the meeting. Um, any comment from the public about it, um, can pull it from the consent agenda, and any commissioners can pull it from the consent agenda any time up until the vote. So I would still recommend that you come to the meeting. Um, and I will write a staff report as well, uh, which I will post uh, one week from today. Um, but otherwise, I'll send you the information about attending. It will once again be virtual. Do you have any questions for me? No, I think that's great. If you, it, I'll look forward to the uh, to the update on the the next meeting, and um, and we'll be there. Great. Thank you so much. I'll Thank see you. you next week. Okay. Bye bye. Okay, this is it's going to be okay. All right, uh, here you are. Perfect. Hi, and I believe Mr. Hume is online as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, this is an application for um, a new business on the back of the Celtic House pub, um, which is in the Arlington Village um, uh, shopping center, which is um, in the focus of the HRI. And so in the rear, these are the existing conditions, and the applicant would like to put a little vestibule over this um, doorway. And so there is the vestibule um, in order to make it uh, well, to locate in the shop. Um, and here is the side of the vestibule. I think I've been calling it a vestibule, but I'm very yeah, open. It's enclosed, it's a vestibule. Yes, it's got the same door on the front. Is that Mr. Hume? No, sorry. This is Mr. Driscoll. Mr. Hume is for the Green Valley. Oh, yeah, yeah. He is on my school. Do the opposite. It's nice to meet you. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, here are some close ups. So I think we discussed um, the. You were trying to match what is existing on some of the other stores. There's already an existing vestibule. There, one of the, there's an existing portico further down. Further down, okay, lovely. So this is these are photos of the conditions. And this is the front, and this is the rear. And so there's going to be a new business here. And um, this is the corner view. And so there you see the existing bar. So we go back to so it is, there you go, it's enclosed. And there's going to be six over six. Uh, are these wood windows? No, it says wood there. We are getting some feedback from people that it's been difficult to hear the speakers in the room. So, oh, okay, yes. Just like to, to those are our um, yeah. microphones. So, would you like to uh, talk well, a little bit more about the first? So, uh, currently, the space is the upstairs. Uh, Lower level was previously a retail space, and the idea is to actually connect the two of them. Internal stairs, like this would be a whiskey bar. Um, the area, I mean, it's not much of a space, it's a very small uh, space. Um, seating area on the inside is only square feet. The, uh, the vestibule itself is 50 square feet. So if we stuck it inside, we'd be losing 10% seating capacity on the inside um, to try to actually leave the, the existing door out of any kind of vestibule would be obviously problematic at the time. Um, if the vestibule was brought into the interior, it sticks actually in front of one of those large plate glass windows, and it 
because, or you have to make it as big as the plate glass window, so it's not sticking to the bottom. That obviously would even more space. Um, the other component is the, the three window, the three plate glass windows, and the, the door in that area are the only aluminum storefront pieces on that building. The original building actually had uh, wood double hung windows, and would have had uh, wood windows. You think it was actually double hung by the top? Yes. If, if you actually look at the side elevation, the side elevation of lungs, um, you probably, if you go to the street views, further up, if you, there's a bunch of, uh, that's, that's the front. And if, so, you, if you all wanted to join the table so that you're on camera, yes, okay. you're more and than then welcome you can, to. Would like to also control the. Here, do I have to do it? No, you don't. I, I can. I can. <laughs> I'm gonna let you do it. Okay. Um, so the wood dull, all the windows that are up on the upper level, you know, where the signage there is, those are actually the original wood double hunks that were in the building, and they've all been blanked off on the inside. So they never been changed because it's easy. Um, but once you go around the building, almost every window in the space, the door, is different. There's there's all there's almost no. So obviously changing out that there's a, the door itself right now is problematic. It's a pair of two six doors, which obviously doesn't meet ADA requirements. Um, so I want to actually make it to a single three zero. Uh, if you look to the left, the uh, so yes. the, next, that must be the next page. I should have brought a copy of it. Oh, must be her. Yeah, if you go to my photos. Are they down? Are they at the end? All the photos are at the end. Sorry. So that so there's a doorway to the left of the two. See the two plate glass windows? There's a door there that actually had been replaced, and that actually is part of the other house well. That's what I actually mirrored. So okay, I was so just the door that you're yeah. I was just here. I was just duplicating that, and then the, the glass itself actually matches the front door. That's all. Mm -hmm. So you plan to have the same door in the front, and then replace the existing door in the rear with um, the matching one. So it matches and then the front. Both be yeah. Compliant. Yeah, and there, obviously there's a pediment on the front of the building. There's a pediment on this one. There's a door. There's a pediment on the, the decker pediment over the door in the front for the pub. Um, there are also broken pediments. Most of the trim in the front actually has dental molding and is more ornate. This is actually just straight ground molding and it's a panel, so it's, I tried to actually sort of dumb it down so it's not as, you know, not original. So there is the pediment on the main door. So I'm going to try to make it compatible, but not the same. Right. I think it ties the front and back together. Looks like it could be. Same place. Could have been there. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think uh, the first, I quite understand it until I saw the front of the issue. Mm -hmm. This is pretty. Yeah. I agree. And one question too so are, you, are, you, are you bringing the sidewalk sort of around the around the vessel itself? Is it sort of dies into like the side of the ground? Yes, yeah, so I'm running the sidewalk. Yes. Okay. If you notice, there's dumpsters there. Yeah. They, yeah. They still have to haul their stuff to the dumpsters around the front of the session. <laughs> <laughs> so. You cross your fingers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, it's. Yeah, I think it's appropriate as well. Okay. So I will enter. Will there be a uh, submission for the sign later, or is that the sign on, on the rear portion? Is that going yeah, to be? Yeah, we still have to figure out the yeah. signage. Okay. Otherwise, it sounds like. Yeah, it works, yeah. Um, yeah, okay, so what you're doing? I'd say put it on consent. I think it's working. I mean, 
Okay, so consent is available to the There was one question that Robert had sort of offline. Um, the, the vestibule, it's, it's ADA compatible, correct? Okay. So that's, that's the doors will open outwards? Yes. No, okay. no, otherwise, no. Okay, so I will send you information about attending that meeting. You probably have heard me say this before. The consent agenda is posted on the beginning of the meeting. And um, anyone can pull it off uh, the agenda by sending us a well, not a complaint, a comment. Um, we are going to post placards <laughs> around the neighborhood just to let people know we mail your adjacent neighborhood. And so if they have any concerns, they will let us know. Um, otherwise, um, yeah, I will send you the information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pop in someday. Pop in down there. Oh, I <laughs> Thank you. So, um, okay, so 2415 Charlotte Street, Valley Pharmacy. Okay, so now. Um, okay, so uh, this is an application that is a return of part of an application that you saw already. So the Green Valley Pharmacy is, um, uh, the owner is partnering with a small business owner, and he is um, working to convert this into a working restaurant, and he would like to put in some exterior seating and um, a pergola to help make that more increasing seating. In addition to that, um, the engineer has <coughs> lots of stormwater management issues and has identified that the planters that you previously approved as ornamental actually need to be by retention um, sunk into the pavement. Um, Mr. Hume, are you on the call? I am. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. So, um, would you like to add anything? Um, I am here yeah. too. Oh, yeah, okay. sorry. Yeah. Anwar Maharme is uh, on our team as well, um, and he has actually been the point of contact, uh, the primary point of contact with the owner and the applicant in this case. Um, so he may have some uh, some additional information to offer. Um, we have a we have a small site which consists of two lots, but only one of them, I guess, falls under the umbrella of the historic um, uh, overlay which is the one where the pharmacy stood. The adjacent piece, which is also being developed as part of this, um, is not in the hist historic part. Is that correct, Serena? Did I get that right? Yes. Yep. And um, other than that, because the site is small, um, we are a bit limited in where we can put things. The predominant uh, direction of drainage from the site is from the north uh, northwest northeast rather to the southwest so toward the intersection of 25th and Sherlington so that's why we've located the bioretention bays where they are shown um, because that's where the water naturally wants to go and we're just collecting it when it gets there anyway that's that's all I can I would add at this point but I will happily answer any questions Anwar did you have anything uh, no, I'm not going to add anything. Just see if they have any questions. Um, um, I think this is, they have the, the dimensions here and this. Um, um, can I confirm that the pergola is going to be freestanding and not attached to the building? Um, uh, it's I can't open, speak to that. It, it, it's open to both way. We are going to design it and we might use the, we might attach it to the building. But if, uh, depend, you know, depend of the, of the structure itself, we might just add uh, separate columns adjacent to the wall. Um, so we would need to know uh, the insulation method before we approve Plans. We would need to know if you're going to affect the historic structure or if you're going to um, mm -hmm. just use the concrete. Yeah, it is yeah. going to be standard pergola with foundation, you know, like standard, uh, like what you see. Once we 
once we come to that stage, we will provide you the design and you can review it. Um, so okay. the problem is that you have submitted this pergola on um, your civil engineering plans, and we uh, cannot sign off on your civil engineering plans with a pergola until we've approved the pergola. So we would need um, the details on how it's going to be constructed. Yeah, I think we are going to submit it with the architecture plan. There is architect, her name, Pat Snyder. I think it's going to be included in her plan. Um, okay, do you know when that is going to be submitted? Actually, we were waiting to get the approval. And if we get the approval of this uh, plan, the site plan, once we get the approval, we can submit the other plan right away. Um, Sounds like, like we, we may need sort of everything together potentially. I mean, I, I guess I'll just talk about what's in front of me right now. I mean, I don't have a problem with the with the bar retention. I think it's, I think maybe it's a sort of a nice addition to we the site, but obviously, but, but I don't think we can really speak to the pergola just based on there's not enough detail to speak to the pergola. So that's that's needed to approve. I guess the, the landscape site plan that I would say we can't. Make a decision on it, but uh, our decision looks good. We would need to know. So, okay, based on this, uh, it appears that there was going to be um, the solid aluminium profile. There's information here about the coating, the crossbar, but it doesn't say how many um, feet there are going to be. Uh, how big the spans are going to be, how tall it's going to be. Um, you mean, I thought we have all the details on this one, but. Uh, well, for example, this uh, is listed as 7,622 millimeters, um, which appears to be the overall length. Are there only going to be three legs? Uh, I cannot see it now. I don't have it. But uh, yeah, I remember we ha we are going to do. This is like the the way is going to look like. But when it comes to exact exact, it's going to be once we submit it to you, we can show you exact uh, measurement uh, and and the height and all of these things. I think we need to see. Because, because this is looks almost like long time we got this information and by the time we get the approval, I might this material, you know, it might be applicable or not. We have to find it, you know, because this is the quote we got from the company. And now we have to revisit and let them provide other quotes, you know, and by by this time, the prices is start changing. You know, I don't know if they're going to honor the same prices or not. That's why if, this, if there's any changes, we are going to come up with different design or similar to exactly like this, but maybe with a with little bit different, you know. I think when this was previously submitted, we had problems with part of the relationship to the historic building. How high up part of the went, and what you can see the top barricade of the historic building. Whatever. I don't think we can approve that. This, they want to say this is this middle for engineering. Or disposal of stormwater. I, I don't have a problem with that. But I certainly have a problem with it. Or any part of the now, some of the elevations of the building. I think that's, they say this, is there a spill, or including the pergola, I don't think we can prove it. I'd agree with that, but yeah. Um, so, uh, I've realized that your predicament is that you um, are, are trying to work with the site, but we really need that information before we can consider it. And that would include uh, the height, um, where it's going to hit the building, how it's going to be affixed, how it will look compared to the building. And so Mr. Wenchel has asked 
uh, I believe even last time that we met, to have elevations at least to see how much of the building will be visible once the pergola has been installed, um, mm -hmm. where the parapet will be visible, because uh, he recommended that it would be beneath um, the parapet line. Uh, so the building itself was not dwarfed by the pergola. Um, and so uh, I'm sure your architect can draw those plans once you know the height of the proposed pergola. But right now, I'm not seeing that information here. It doesn't say how wide it's going to be or, or how big the, the legs are going to be or um, any of the information about how it's going to okay. be. OK, yeah, we, we will talk with the architecture and let them come. Let her come with the like uh, cross sections and show you the heights and uh, the way the dimension of this pergola exact. Great. Dimension. Um, yeah. So uh, can you get that to me this week? Do you need me to call uh, Pat um, Snyder and talk her through what I need? I will. I will try to get it this you uh, this week. But maybe yeah, I will try maybe next week if we cannot get it this week. Um, okay, if you get it to me after, like in two weeks, then I would need to put it on the July agenda for consideration. Um, but I suppose we could move forward with the bioretention planters for this. Okay. Um, yeah, but just main thing, you now you are looking for the heights and the dimension. So the dimension we mentioned on the site plan, the overall dimension, and the height, I could give you now the height is going to be the height of the building, a little bit less than the, the building. OK, so um, I would need that in a more formal yeah. way. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So yes, you get me okay. on the plans. Yeah, I will provide it to you. Mm -hmm. Serena, I have a quick question for you, if I may. Yes. Um, you had mentioned uh, or you had questioned how the pergola will uh, exist the other free state either freestanding or um, connected to the building um, and uh, there will certainly be um, a connection of sorts at the very least to the building to uh, create that um, weatherproof uh, rainproof connection so that the water will not run between the the pergola and the building itself um, but is there are, are there any prohibitions against it being connected to the building in some fashion or another? And there are no blanket um, guidelines about that. However, the Secretary of the Interior Standards do um, recommend, and it's it's a recommendation in name, it's a requirement that um, the changes to the exterior of the building could be reversed in a way yeah. that would not damage the building. And so yeah. um, we would need some evidence that it's not going to be. Yeah, I anticipated that, but I wanted to make certain that I understood so we could relay that um, mm -hmm. to the to the architectural design team as okay. well. So now there will be, like I said, there will be some manner of connection to the building in all likelihood, just that the rain will not run mm -hmm. between the building and the pergola. And Beyond that should be fine, we just need the information. Understood. And and again, I want to be able to relay that accurately to the architectural team. Great. And if you yeah, need to talk to Pat or anyone on the architectural team, I can do that. Just let me know. Yeah, Mark, let me add something. Even even that, this pergola is not going to water seal. I wouldn't mind if there is water coming, like sealing. If we are going to do it freestanding and those cover will be like removable and mm -hmm. it's going to be used, limited use only during the winter times. Uh, or, or a raining time. I mean, we don't have to have it sealed, you know. I, I mean, we will we work. Can, we can talk about that offline. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. I think we're less worried also about if the the top of the pergola is going to be connected, but whether the columns are going to be bolted in, if they're how that is going to affect it, because that structurally could affect yeah. the building more than the, mm -hmm. the awning itself. Yeah. But, um, Understood. We'll we'll get to the bottom of that. Yeah, Perfect. Exactly. Thank you so much. So um, I will plan to put you on the discussion agenda, um, and I will um, communicate with you over the coming week about uh, the additional information we need and when we're going to get that. Um, and yes, so I will send you all that information in the email. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you yeah. Serena. Thank you, everybody. Yes. Okay. So.
Thank you all for waiting. Um, so I have what you submitted to me as a skill. Um, and we've got um, Alice Hagman online. She can share our PowerPoint oh, okay. for tonight. Okay. Good morning. Sonia Hagman, Alice Hagman's Oh, Lauren, I didn't even let you speak during the rest of your argument. That's OK. You did a wonderful job. Thank you so much. And um, glad that got to the consent agenda. So yes, I'm here for any questions as well as kind of helping the DRC understand the many things that we're going to be talking about tonight. I think my count is seven things. So Laura, I'm going to hold you to it. All right. Sorry, sorry I missed the end of your, um, your intro. Are, are, you, are you good for us to start? Yes, please go right ahead and go into um, the, your overview of this kind of second half to the project. Great, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Nice to see you all again. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> as you know, I'm Lauren Hartley with Walsh Colucci. We're a ladies attorney representing African and Jarvin Lynch. Um, and I'd just like to reintroduce some folks, new folks we have in the room. They may have seen uh, online last time. Uh, we have David Hildy from Jarvin Lynch. We also have Alex Hageman online, who's, who's running the PowerPoint. Um, from Basha Hair Sign Architects, we have Madonna Trisma and Antoine Lebron. And then from FICA, we have Jeff Krups tonight. Uh, I believe we also have some folks from Tracerings uh, on, on, on Teams as well. Uh, so, you guys have Sarah and Laura. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, if you go to the next slide, Alice. This is just a refresher to reorient you to where we are in Barcroft. Barcroft is that uh, overall site there outlined in yellow. And then section three, this initial renovation phase is limited to that portion of section three, which is highlighted in red there. And then on the right, you can see, um, you can see that it's limited in scope to just these five buildings within section three, buildings 22 through 26. Can you go to the next slide? Uh, and then just to recap our May meetings with you all, we met with the DRC on May 3rd and then the HALRB on May 17th. Um, we, had, we went over the initial renovation page, uh, phase project overview as a whole, uh, and then we mostly discussed the massing and scale materials of these building additions on three of the buildings, 24, 25, and 26. So we had a little bit of homework Coming out of those meetings, you all um, had concluded that the building additions were appropriate and massive in scale, but it asked us to look into some additional colors for that building 25 sleeping porch addition. Coming out of those meetings, the preference was that those sleeping porch additions would be brick and have double hung windows, uh, since the doubles look uh, better on the brick than the, than the triple windows. So we've incorporated that into our design. Um, and architects have some brick options to show you tonight as well. And then we had also discussed those rear addition vent shapes, the semicircular vents, the conclusion from those two meetings was, uh, was that you all prefer that reduced semicircular vent size. Um, the architect had sh also shown an alternate size at the HALR, uh, alternate shape at the HALRB meeting. So um, we do have that as, a, as an option tonight to show you as well. We prefer the semicircular uh, option, but since we discussed it at HLRB, we thought we would show it, we show it here as well. Um, and then aside from the design updates, we're also going to go through a couple other items relating to the renovation of those existing apartment buildings, which will be replacement of the basement windows, um, exterior light fixtures on the buildings that we're replacing, tree preservation and removal on the sites. Um, some repairs to those two garage buildings on the site. Uh, then we'll also go through those Virginia housing minimum design construction standards for the vinyl cladding of, of wood trim fascia boards, as well as the requirement for entryway canopies. So with that, I'll hand it off to Murdad with Monster Hair Sign now to walk you through some of those architectural updates. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Uh, so on this slide, we see the extension as you see, we are uh, adding two masks to, to this building. We spoke about this in our previous uh, meetings, uh, the DRC and also in the ARB, in terms of massing and the volume. I think that we are not going to repeat the same thing. Here we have, we are showing the two options of the grade. 
One is the two tones that is our preferred actually. So that volume of the private space or basically the bedrooms, we show it with another color. So it marks basically with the main volume, which is the, the living room on the, on the other side. And that living room is shared into two different units, as you see on the middle uh, center line. And then on, on the, the below elevation, we can see it just with one tone or monotone brick. That, so the whole volume will be just one brick which matches to the existing uh, facade's uh, brick color. Next slide, please. Yeah, here we have the renderings. I mean, we try to show the best with, uh, with our tools to show the two tones of the brick, basically. So as you see, the, 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 the mass or the volume of the bedrooms, which is slightly recessed, actually, it is uh, treated differently with, you know, with another. So with the given context here, you can see it. And whether from the roof or, or from the brick uh, color. And uh, down there also, you can see from another perspective, another angle, the same, uh, the same two additions, basically, to the building. Next. Yeah, so this one is the monotone rendering, actually. Again, it's the same. Uh, just the brick color is different, uh, which uh, we try to match it as much as we can. Uh, of course, we're going to... Uh, reuse the, the, the bricks that we are uh, removing from the main building, but also the, the color will be matched to the uh, to the uh, to the existing facade. So uh, on this one, the other element, architectural element that we see is basically the the, the, the attic uh, vent. Last, uh, in our last meeting, we spoke about it that as you see the original building on the left side, that's the original size of the, uh, of that uh, vent. And uh, we had used that one, but uh, we reduced the size. As you see, it is uh, something like 20, 25% reduced to, and it, uh, it, uh, it is more proportionate basically to, to this uh, uh, facade. The other change was that uh, we had that stripe under the window that was like a roll of projected out of the uh, of, out of the uh, brick wall that we now we still have it that that uh, that stripe but uh, it is flush to the to the facade and it's like it's not projected it's just like a, another treatment of the you know brick course basically so that you can see it like a, you know like a stripe but it's not projected out it is flush to the side but down there what the water table is still so the only element that is projected is that water table on the you know at the ground level that that area exactly that is that is the only uh, place that we show that projected out so this is another uh, architectural uh, i'm going to flip back to the renderings for a second because i think it's well displayed there as well just so we can because i thought that was valuable to point out Oops, you can see here. Correct, yes. So on the rendering, we can see it a little bit better. Of course, as you see on, on the top, we can, we can see that that stripe in the, in, in the living room uh, volume, basically. Now we do not continue to the, to the bedroom uh, volume. But uh, the, that stripe uh, at the ground level, that, that, that roll lock is projected out and it goes around the that that uh, building extension. You can also see the the new vents here. That uh, is uh, the size is uh, more appropriate and proportionate to the to the new facade. This is another approach, actually another design that we had, an alternate design, basically for the attic vent. Uh, well, we prefer the other one, but we also studied this one and uh, designed it. So this is, uh, as you see, it's more rectangular vents, and the, the overall form um, gives the, the, the impression of a triangle again, but it's not a triangle, it just gives that impression. Um, we don't have this in other buildings. This is a new one. It's again, it's another approach and another design. Uh, it's not our preferred, but we, we would like to 
to show you this uh, this one too. One. Okay, the the windows. Uh, so uh, we're going to change. Uh, well, some of the windows have been changed in the building, and uh, recently, uh, a few years ago, and now we we want we need to change the other windows to to answer the request of the BHA, the minimum uh, requirements of the BHA. And uh, they are, uh, in terms of energy code, etc. they are, uh, they meet the requirements, as you see, the U value, the SHGC, et cetera. Uh, in terms of form, also, they are, uh, they, they match the existing, they are six over six, the simple hunk. And uh, they are uh, simulated divide uh, windows, so, um, Yeah, I just want to elaborate a little bit more. Um, I believe all of the windows on these buildings, except for the basement windows, have been replaced before. And like Redon noted, they are the final six over six windows. And then so the what we were proposing is the same on the basements, uh, but with this simulated divided light um, as uh, uh, historic preservation staff and HLRB mentioned on our last Meaning there is an interest expressed for some simulated divided light for the additions in the basement windows, but the other windows on the, on these buildings will remain uh, existing vinyl windows, and they do not have external lenses. Correct. Right. And then so this is going to be for basement, and then also for the new addition uh, windows. Yeah, for uh, the exterior light fixture also, we we're going to match the, the, the existing uh, lights uh, with the same uh, design and uh, yeah. <laughs> As you know, one of the more compelling components of the Barcroft site is the mature tree canopy and the setting in which all these buildings are placed. And we just wanted to take a minute to walk you through our overall strategy, which of course is to be as sensitive as possible to that environment. So this is kind of a high level diagram, but I think it's fairly helpful. Um, everything that's circled in a color, right, is one of the trees on site. And we color coded them so that you can understand what's happening. The most important thing I think to point out is the red trees are the trees that are coming out because of just direct conflict with the building, right? So our intent is to only remove the trees that we have to remove. Those six are coming out because of, well, actually the, the one, two, the four primary ones right in the center are coming out because of the actual construction. There are two shown to be removed because they're basically on their way out and they're not contributing to uh, anything meaningful. The green are all the large trees that are being proposed. The blue is a very important contiguous canopy uh, that the county has identified as a preservation area they'd like to see maintained, which we are adhering to. Um, and then lastly, uh, there are well, two other colors. The yellow color are invasive species trees, which we've identified, which we will be removing for the county short sort of standard. We would do that on anything. So those yellow trees are coming out. And then there are two dead trees in purple, which are going to be, will, will come out and be replaced in kind. Ultimately, what the chart on the right hand side says is, you know, we, you add all that up, we owe a certain number of trees and we're going to be providing in a, well beyond that number of trees. So it's our goal to replace that canopy beyond what we're taking down. Uh, and the other component too is, this is sort of a snapshot in time. We are, as you can imagine, one of the other components to the rehabilitation is to deal with the drainage, right, from the downspouts. A lot of the downspouts now just splash onto the ground, it erodes the ground, so one of our goals is to try to mitigate that. So the, the sort of final configuration of how that drain system shakes out is still being worked on. So this may evolve slightly as that goes on, but we're trying to, once again, be as light on the land as we possibly can, given that we're trying to now capture all of the downspouts and you know, restore the, the ground to a more stable and, and uneroded state, if you know what I mean. So. That's sort of from a high level, that's what we're trying to do from a pre preservation standpoint. Thank you, Jeff. 
Alice, if you could stay here for just a moment, this will tie into the um, garage repairs. Do you mind um, putting your mouse to where those two existing garage buildings are? Yeah, so you can see where they are on the site plan. If you can go to the next slide. Um, and, I, and I apologize, we were not able to get this information to you in time to include in your packet for, for this meeting, but we've been in discussions with um, Lauren and Cynthia and Historic Preservation about these existing garage buildings on, on the site. And as you can see, they need a little bit of love and repair as well. So the uh, the applicant proposes to um, to kind of upgrade, repair these buildings in a similar fashion as they are the uh, with the existing apartment buildings. And so they'll be cleaning that brick, pointing it up where it's necessary. There are portions of these roofs that need to be repaired on the garage buildings. Also, be replacing some light fixtures like we're doing on the existing apartment buildings. Um, and they'll also, lastly, replace these garage doors uh, with the same uh, pattern and color to match to match the existing ones. So we wanted to show that to you as well. And I think I'll hand it back to Verdad to wrap up with the Virginia housing requirements that, that we discussed. Uh, yeah, correct. So uh, as Jordan said, uh, as a part of the minimum requirements for the Virginia housing, uh, we have to uh, we have to repair and uh, or uh, you know if necessary some changes to the exterior uh, to the trim and fascia. As you see, the whatever it is, the exterior wooden trim, brick mold, seals, fascia, etc. And uh, the columns are to be clad with uh, vinyl and vinyl coated similar materials. And uh, there are some exceptions that may be considered for this sort of building. And we will this is be the idea. Yes. We will be applying for the yes. waiver for Virginia yes. housing. Unfortunately, we won't know the outcome of that waiver until after August. And these items are going to the county board in July. So we're, we're including them in the for now. Next slide. Um, so we arrived to the Canopy that is also one of the requirements. So we have designed it when we showed you this, these two designs before in our previous meeting. There are two different approaches for the uh, for the canopy. So one is uh, more, uh, let's say, not just modern but functional because of its width. Uh, and as you see, it is with a tie back to the, to the main building that is on the left side. And the other one is more classical and more you know, traditional that is uh, again it's with a very light structure. Uh, also, it is tied to the building, but it's uh, it's a bit narrower and I'm less wide. But we, it provides uh, a, you know like three thirty inches of overhang uh, along the front and twelve inches along each side of the door. Uh, that's it. We'll be applying for an exemption. Yeah. as well so um, and then we, we have these options so if we have to put a canopy in we have to clad the um, the trims is, these are the options so this is the option one actually with the tie back to, to the building uh, so we try to uh, make it elevated so that we can it, it doesn't really how can I say uh, we can see the entire uh, door trim and that decorative element that is around the door so that that this kind of is well high above the door. Both of them are actually the same, uh, so but with different uh, design and different approach. And then the, the, this is our preferred actually. And then the next uh, slide, uh, as you see, it's with a, a much lighter structure, like the tri triangular structure, and just a sloped. Uh, it covers uh, a little bit of you know front of the door. Then also on the back entrance, also we have a canopy again. It's uh, same design to the continuity of the second option, but uh, but we we don't think that we need uh, that that option one for the back door actually. So that's uh, that's that's a second entrance and uh, it's uh, the back entrance. 
the end of our presentation in terms of timing. So this is the second time we're before you we'll go before the HALRB again uh, on the 21st. We're also going to the form based code advisory working group next Wednesday to give them an update on the 14th. And then we expect to go before the planning commission and the county board on our form based code use permit, which will incorporate the proposed renovations and additions um, that'll happen in July. So um, now we're happy to discuss the, the renovations and design updates with you. Uh, can I make a few comments? Of course. Okay, I uh, missed the presentation before in this history of back. And uh, so this is the first time I've actually seen it. Okay. I didn't have any problem with most of what I've seen. suggestion. Where you have the new additions to the building on the back. The, the sleeping, sleeping porch additions? The, uh, the edges of that building run right up to the existing window. And if you stop, Sleeping porch, maybe east of foot, say, short of that, recess the wall slightly, move the notch out of That would make the building, those windows look less crowded. They look awfully crowded. Brick running right up to the Alice, do you mind going back to the, yeah, the rendering so we can just see? I can show see, you. Yeah, see. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. So at the corner right yeah, there. Yeah, if I could. Yeah. It's this point here. It, it just runs right up to the building. If you stop this wall, this point, right? Here, short of that, put a slight recess in, get a recess of the reed, and it couldn't look like reed in the middle of the building. And I don't think that would affect the square footage when you should take out the reed. So, for those on the, on the computer, uh, Mr. Winchell was pointing out where the sleeping porch addition meets the existing building on the back and how close that is to the existing window frames. And so the suggestion was to slightly recess the, um, the sleeping porch addition by a foot or so uh, where, where it meets the existing building. So Murda, did you have any? Um, uh, well, I, I do agree with you that in terms of form, it is a better it's a good idea. My only concern is that we have docks on that wall actually that comes out, you know, and uh, that makes some sort of you know turn dot in bulkhead that makes it uh, say on the interior side that's going to make it more. probably on from the exterior side it's it's better, but from the interior side we're going to have some problems at that time, you know. But again, we can we can. Well, there, are, there are so many solutions. Yeah, I, I, I think that was a very good um, comment, Andy. And I'm just kind of curious if when you mean you wanted to kind of be pulled back away from the window, then we'll start to lose square footage, though, for this space. Or are you just hoping to have that be a part of the brick design a bit? I think if I think that in terms of square footage, I, I would say. So you're going to take about one square foot on each floor to, to recess that. Yeah, I think he I, needs I'm to just keep the wall and then push it in. it just like crowds it. that window. Okay. You know, um, and uh, just because uh, I'm thinking of all the things we need to talk about. I hope you don't mind if I make a suggestion that we look at each thing that was presented to the DRC in order. And um, Mr. Davis, if you don't mind, maybe we can just get input from each of the DRC members on each one. Um, that way we can just make sure that we hit every point tonight. And 
if everyone's comfortable with that approach, um, my suggestion is we go around the table and ask how people are feeling about the color of the brick going from the light to the dark. And if everybody, which one do they like most? Um, that one, so I, I, I prefer option one, the, uh, the two-tone brick. Um, that's my preferred option. I think the only addition I'd make is that eventually this, this force might also benefit from having the soldier force banding as well. They kind of tie it together, but not, but not change the color. But, but the banding should be the same color as the, uh, as the, as the uh, main brick of the um, Kind of add like a same, same color um, solar course um, at that um, uh, addition to, to, to the addition. Yeah. On that, the main addition? Um, this, this thing of, of, of having, it's adding, um, yeah, right, 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 uh, where the cursor is. So add, yeah. adding yeah. a, a continuous in the brick up. The brick up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is going to tie the, the brick patterning together. Actually, we did the had that design to, we had so many different yeah. scenarios, yeah. but uh, at the end we had to decide which yeah. one would take and which one would not move. Like, I mean, it does read as a very solid mass, or just as it is now, but I think that would, at least to, you know, I think that would add, it, add design. But definitely optional. Okay, Andy, which one do you, what are you feeling? Option one or option two? Yeah, I think option one is fine. Okay. I'd like to point out option one, and this illustrates it. Again, if you see the light brick and then your addition, the darker brick, you've got a recess there. You turn the corner and show that the two pieces are different. That's what I'm getting at on the rear notch. It, it, it doesn't, it reads like you ran literally what you, you've done. It's run the thing right next to the frame. And I don't think you can do that. I think it, quite frankly, it looks visually awful. So that's why uh, Rebecca? We had to step off Lauren, so she's not online anymore. So just Omari okay. and Andy. Okay. Serena, did Andy, I'm sorry, Andy, did Robert provide any comments, maybe by email or anything? Not yet, no. Okay. 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 So it sounds like Omari, Andy, you're both are comfortable with option one with maybe some tweaks. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. I think we should go to we did have you guys presented, I think, the vents next. Yes. Cause you're so why don't we talk about the attic vents? Are you uh yeah. are com sorry, go ahead. On the, the vents, I guess what I'd like to see again is the three triangle, the three rectangles. Oh, the other option. Yes, the other option. Yeah, the other, uh, option two is, I think. The, you prefer option two? I prefer option two just because it really distinguishes the additions. As different. And I, I think it accomplishes your purpose. This like it because it makes another statement about the fact that these are additions and not part of the original. Uh, moreover, it's a touch of modernity, I would say, in this uh, yeah. in this one. Instead of uh, bringing the same uh, old, uh, I mean, old is good, but. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Same way, vents, basically. Yeah. It's just two between the, the, the old and the new. It's a conversation. Just trying to make a distinction, as you've done with the brick color and so forth, between what was the original building 
Right. Uh, this is going to be subtly blocked. I would agree, actually, as well. I, I think that the I think that the reduction in the half round looks I think it looks appropriate. It looks nice, but I do think that this is kind of a sharp, kind of more modern sort of take on things. I think I mean, I think it, I, I like it. Yeah, kind of freshens it up in a way. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't expect that it would do sort of so much for it. To be honest, it's very subtle, but I do like it. Okay, I, I think the next item are talking about the basement windows. Good, got the order down. <laughs> I, took good, I took good, I took good notes. Okay, I'm impressed. so uh, thanks Alice. So, um, all right, so with the windows, we are proposing to replace the metal awning windows that are at the basement with a vinyl window, but it's the same pattern as what is there now um, and it will be simulated light and then these would also be the windows that you would be are being proposed in the additions do i have that all right correct correct okay so can you um the existing basement windows so um just to show what the, the yeah what we're replacing and um, can you all, so are we going to be start looking into the fact that the basement spaces, like there's no units in these right now, correct? No, it's a kind of utility space, I think. Are we yep, planning? It's, it's, it's storage are, space. Okay. And are, are you planning with the basement story? Is this now going to be living units? No, anywhere that it's, we're not, um, yeah, we're not at changing any storage space into units and then anywhere that was a basement unit as you might call it previously there's they've already replaced the windows so basically any windows serving a unit have already been replaced it's just the windows that were serving storage space that had not been replaced and just so that uh the drc know um this is a item that does not follow the conservation area standards um with replacing these windows but um, they are your typical kind of metal frame windows and they are challenging to make energy, make the spaces inside energy efficient. Um, so, um, I mean, I'm seeing that all the windows have been replaced and, you know, again, We've kind of been given a bone a little bit with the National Park Service kind of stating that, you know, the windows and window replacements, at least for multifamily buildings, uh, is not as um, is is not as a significant of a change. Um, but please, uh, Omari and Andy, what are your thoughts on the replacement of the basement awning windows? I don't have any problem with. It. Uh, one question though, would, would the new basement window would, would also be divided to have the, the sort of three lights? I, I noticed that they're, they're sort of like short, like like a, like a three light divided basement window. If you, if you go to the ice image that was up previously, there's like. Yeah, I'll ask you to go back to your photos. I don't know if they're all that way or not. I'm just, just curious. I mean, will the new ones. Yeah, they're, they're three divided. Yeah, yeah they're different. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, we're not, you guys looked into the window types down here. Would they be the. And three divided by okay. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I'm in a wall. The problem is, yeah. have any of the um, have any of these awning windows already been replaced anywhere in Barcroft? Alice, do you know? Not to my knowledge. Not yeah, that I, I don't think it. Okay. Certainly not in this section where I've spent a lot of time. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. I don't think so actually, but um, I can say 90% I'm sure that they are not, not changed. But uh, again, we didn't, we, don't remember. we didn't really pay attention to this detail. Okay. You done? Lauren, when we're dealing with um. You make make a mention in the presentation that with this being one of the items that doesn't meet the conservation area standards, what is the what is the administrative process that you'll need to go through um, um, with the form based code and having this go through to the county board? What is the mechanism? 
do you just propose that those are that it's just the matter of that it doesn't meet the standard, but for these reasons, we think it should move forward. I mean, what or does all of the conservation area standard then get changed for all properties? We we are not proposing to amend the form based code conservation area standards, so I think we we are able to move forward with this form based code use permit kind of with this modification of the standard. Um, and then I don't believe I can double check with planning staff, but I don't think we need any uh, approval from the HALRB. Just you all will um, submit your recommendations to, to the county manager and then the county board will approve uh, the project as, as proposed. So Amara, I think you said you were fine with vinyl. And Andy, did you say you were fine with the vinyl replacement? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay. I think we can move on now to the entrance canopies. Or we had light fixtures. Ah, darn it. I got it wrong. All right. Light <laughs> fixtures. <laughs> so well. All right. Light fixtures. Yeah, this one was really um, I have no problem with it. I mean, it's pretty much kind. I think it's I think it's appropriate for the use of any kind, sort of more traditional wooden fixture. I mean, to any reason it's necessary. Modern fixture here, so that makes sense. I agree. I think it's fine. Cynthia has her hand up. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I think it would be helpful if, if you know this tonight, great, but I think for the HLRB, if you could provide the total number of fixtures you're replacing in this section three. Okay, well, yeah, we'll get that information. You want Thank you. Total number, you, would it be helpful to have any other types of exhibits, like showing where they are on the buildings or just, just the number? I think the number, as long as you're not introducing them into new places, if, if you're just if you're just swapping out existing sconces, I think that's fine. But I think if you're deviating from that at all, I would suggest pointing that out. Great. Okay. Thank you. And can you do it per building? Yes. All right, I think the next one I cheated because I because you flipped. So it's the uh, tree plan and. But you didn't say anything about the renovated courtyard. Do we have any? Well, that's a, it's ongoing. Yeah, I mean, okay. the, the renovated courtyard. It's basically completely shaded, so anything that we do in there is going to be. pervious, right? So it's either going to be wood decking or some sort of you know, mulch treatment for a trail that goes through there. So it's very light. And there are a couple of trees proposed, ornamental understory trees that would potentially go in there. That area is still being looked at from a design standpoint. So it's evolving. But, also, but thank you for bringing that up. I had forgotten to mention that. We're planning on having some seating yeah. there as well, like some kind of picnic table benches for folks in the community to, to gather and, and eat together. But those details will get fleshed out a little more with uh, when it comes time to do the landscape. And so how is that going to how would that work then if we aren't able to get an idea of how the courtyard will look before the HLRB meeting? Alice, do we have that sketch? We have a we have a highly conceptual yeah. sketch that we put together. Give me a second. I'll pull it up here on the slide. And Lauren, we will also have that more refined for this next use permit submission. So okay. with a little bit of luck, we'll have it available prior to the meeting with HALRB, yeah. the next version of this. So it'll have a more detail so you can assess it a little more closely. Okay. Alice, I think that's the first backup slide. Oh, thank you. Let me see. Okay. Oh, sorry, guys. Looks <laughs> good. You like it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Approved. Yeah. yeah, cheers. Yeah. Jeff, do you just want to go over the. 
Let me just get just get back to it. There we go. <laughs> there we go. So as you can see from the previous plan, the blue plan, the entire area is covered by canopy well overhead. This happens to be one of the few relatively flat areas on the site. As you know, if you've been out there, it's very, very steep. So we wanted to make use of this area to just provide a little gathering space for the broader you know, grouping of buildings. So the, the intent would be perhaps uh, a very like a mulch or a compacted gravel trail that would connect from the, you know, the stairways and a couple of picnic tables, a couple of benches and some ornamental trees underneath. That's sort of the maximum that we would do there. In addition, what we're looking at right now, Lauren, is on the right hand or the left hand side where it says existing lawn, it's kind of an, it's an area that's kind of eroded. It's got big, big trees there. But from an, uh, an ADA accessibility standpoint, this area, the rectangular area, is down four to six feet below the parking lot, which is that double line on the upper left-hand side. So we're going to provide a, a smaller area where it says existing lawn that would be sort of would be our accessible component to this uh, community gathering space. So that's the piece that's evolving as we speak. So we'll get more details for you as we go. But there are retaining walls that are around that. Now they will remain. We're not proposing to, um, we might punch through to put a, set, a better set of steps down because the steps in the lower, that lower set of steps is very narrow. So it's, there's some pieces that are moving, but we're not gonna, we wanna disturb that as little as possible, given that there are a lot of trees and roots throughout that area. Thanks for that overview. And I think it would be very, I'm glad, thank you so much for being prepared and having it as a hidden slide. I think, I, I know you all are working on this, but I think that the HLRB will be interested to see it. I think my one question I have is, Alice, do you know if you have a view of this area, uh, like an existing condition photo I do. of this area? I have, I have a couple photos um, I can pull up right now. I'm sorry, I hijacked the DRC discussion. Sorry, Mr. Davis. Of course, now it's taking its time loading. So this is the existing retaining wall. Um, the stairs are just off screen here, and this is sort of the existing lawn area that Jeff mentioned where we put the accessible components. Here's another. Here's another view. Sorry, I was looking for specific reasons, but um, stairs again are, are kind of right off screen here um, and just showing the sort of flat flat area that we want to improve. And that, the other that fence is on a what, what, 46 retaining wall. Right? Yeah, the, Which, the, the retaining wall here. It's, it's, yeah, it's down. So you all are going to keep the rails? Yeah, we're going to probably we paint be... them, fix them up, yeah. paint them. Okay. But, right. yeah. okay. They're pretty typical for what we see on site. So rather than, you know, uh, reinvent the wheel there, just match exist or not even replace, just paint and uh, clean up. And it's really required because of the drop from one side to the other. So we would need to have a guardrail there of some kind yeah. anyway. So, yeah. Mr. Davis and uh, Mr. Warha, do you have any questions about the tree plan? The fact that uh, I mean, taking my notes that it's seven trees that need to be removed because it's affected by the construction, but we'll be getting 12 back. And um, the fact that they're getting rid of invasive species, um, if there's any concerns on that. No concern on that, no. I mean, looking here at sort of where the, where the exit, where the red circles are, makes sense. You know, the trees at those locations are based on different factors and how conditions and also they're located sort of somewhere that you touch on the building on most of the walls. Um, so, you know, the walls are pretty standard. It makes sense. I mean, and the good thing is that the more trees after the fact, and also the main canopy is, is, is staying at, at, at the distance. So, that's a positive. I agree. Um, I think the question that I have on this is um, with the 12 replacement trees, are you are you doing the 12 replacements in section three or are you putting it throughout Barcroft or are you going the route of donating to the tree fund? No, these will all be replaced on site, on this site, this. At section three, okay. Yes, section three, yes. Okay, great. 
And my last question is the big tree, the big tree that needs to come down. Do you have an idea of what the diameter is on that? We do. Um, I don't have it with me, but we have we have inventoried every tree on site, so we have the DBAs and all that stuff, so I can get that to you. Okay. I just anticipate that you'll have some um, some tree enthusiasts at the HLRB meeting that will want to may ask those details. So absolutely. Yep. Great. Heads up. I can pull that up, um, but we can move, you know, it'll take me a minute. So. Fine. Then do we have the garage repairs? Yeah. What, um, what material is, is the garage doors right now? Is that I don't know. I actually couldn't tell you. I think they probably are vinyl if I had to guess. I don't know if anyone else on the team has a better sense, but I, I'm not 100% sure. Did, was that a question about the garage doors? Material, yeah, garage door material. I want to say that I want to say that most of the garage doors at Barcroft are still wood. Oh. But I don't believe these are because of the way they you can see there's like dents in them. Like I think they maybe they're like an aluminum type material, but I don't think it dents like a wood. Um, well, we can confirm. Yeah, that. we'll take a look yes. at the material before our net before the HALRB meeting. Okay. Thank what was you. it from the replacement or? Um, Alice, we, we don't have the spec specification for the door quite yet, uh, but it would be we would locate a door that has the same pattern and the same color as the existing door. Correct. And with these <laughs> um, repairs to the garages, I know that some of the spaces are, it seems like a lot of the residents there are using the garage spaces for storage or even maybe for like workshop um kind of items is is the hope that this will now kind of go back to i'm assuming that they were used just as car garages originally is that the hope that that's what would be the case or what are what are your intentions right we, we didn't know for some time quite how these were being used in the majority of the cases but david do you want to yeah, speak to yeah, our, the uh, survey that you've done yes yeah, so we, we resurveyed for, surveyed them and um actually it turns out a, a, you know, a majority of these were storing vehicles, actually. We thought it was more storage, but oh, okay. we storing yeah, vehicles. Yeah, we thought it was the other way around, but it turns out people are actually parking their cars in these garages more, more often than not. So the intent, uh, because they are currently being used for parking, would be to keep them um, as, as um, required parking for the site. And it looks like the diameter of that tree in question 3343 is 38 inches. Does that sound right to you, Jeff? Yes. <laughs> Big. I know. It's a sad, sad loss for all of us. We're family size units. Yeah. yeah. No, I. Yeah. That's okay. Let's go back to the tree discussion then. Um, I think then. Uh, that's a that's a big tree. That's a really big tree. Now I don't know what the options are, but if there's any creative solutions you can come up with to continue to sweeten the approach to this, I agree. More family units are are a need. I would reiterate to the HLRB the fact that we only have six. I think like six four bedroom in all of the county even like something to that extent i'm just wondering if there might some be some approach to when these trees come down maybe it's looking into the idea of reusing the wood for the picnic tables something that kind of doesn't feel like we're just i think i think i think you're going to have to consider some approaches probably not a, probably not a bad idea i mean it is a Large tree, and so oak is as healthy as probably it's still got a lot of years left. So, I mean, we just kind of think of that and add the app. I mean, I, I understand that. I, I think that given sort of the housing shortage in Arlington in general, I think it probably makes sense to do it, but there we should probably also sort of discuss ways of mitigating the, 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 the loss as well. 
might be a good idea for us to understand with the 12 trees that are going to be planted um, on site, what their lifespan is anticipated to be, as well as how how large they might be able to grow. I don't know if that might kind of calm down feelings. Yeah, that and Jeff, you can speak to, we are planning on going above and beyond the required tree replacement on this site. Yeah, the actual landscape plan, I think at the end of the day, we're all told there's a, a replacement total of about 21, I think now, but we're proposing probably on the order of 30-ish and they will all go in this area. So again, we'll, we'll be providing more and it will be a mix of both canopy trees with that expected life, you know, long life expectancy and high, you know, large trees providing the shade, as well as a few of the understory trees, uh, which are, you know, smaller, but flowering provides some interest. So I, it'll be a mix of both, but we can have a little more specificity to that for the HALRB. Uh, thanks, thanks for answering my questions on that and bringing that up, Alice and uh, uh, Omari and Andy. Is there any other comments you want to have on the garages? Uh, this the, the the green growth on, on top of the garage. But that's just like a like a vine or weed, I guess. It's not, it's not a, it's not a green root. Yeah. No, it's yeah. not. It's, it's not, not intended to, 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 to be there. Yeah. 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 Be very forward thinking. Yeah, I was thinking it wasn't so shady right there. I think, you know, well, we can <laughs> lean into that a little. All right. Okay. What's next uh, in the presentation? Since I got yeah. it wrong, past three. Uh, all right. Yeah, we, we flopped it to in on the, the housing requirements. So it's the uh, trim and fascia boards and the canopies, last two. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the last two. Just to reiterate on that too, so we're applying July 1, our um, junior housing application. They have a you know, set cycle. And for that, they need the, you know, the, they need the use permit to come but they're not going to get to review our drawings until August. That's why. That's why we say that, that we're, we, yeah, in no scenario can we get it before the submission. Unfortunately, so what we've been trying to do is just we know that this has been done in the past. There's exceptions for these, but um, you know, we're just not going to know. And we are going to be applying for. It. We'll be applying. For it. I think with that, I think I think it's making sense. Obviously, hopefully, the project. Gets So just to give a little bit of um, extra info, um, I know that we're trying to see if we can get an exemption for these items because um, again, it doesn't follow our conservation area standards, um, but there are a couple ways to look at it. Um, it is, so you all are planning on replacing the wood if it's damaged and then covering it with vinyl or aluminum. Correct. Is Sarah or Laura on the? I think Laura. Yeah. I saw Laura was on, but I I bring that up only because if that is the if that is what is being planned to be done, whenever these types of changes are needing to be done to a historic building, the idea we are always looking into how, what could typically be um, reversed in the future if necessary and i look at it as if this is something where we cannot get a waiver from virginia housing's requirements and this needs to happen that it's still there it's just covered and i know that that's not ideal but i also recognize that we aren't going to be able to confirm or not if we're able to get a waiver now i have a meeting set to talk to um, the kind of review compliance representative at the department of historic resources uh, tomorrow in fact um, to kind of get a better understanding of this waiver um, 
possibility and see what the process is just to kind of get a better understanding of it um, as well as to see see if I can understand some of the different scenarios um, so that I can at least give the HLRB some more information on it because again I can't I can't ask them what is the likelihood that this is going to get a waiver, um, these items, but, you know, maybe they can give me some more information and we can kind of feel comfortable that maybe there is a likelihood that that will happen. So we're trying to get as much info as we can. Right. And, and in terms of the reversibility, I think, uh, Laura, Sarah, the intent is to clad over on, on top of the wood trim with, with vinyl. And then I don't, one thing I don't know is whether or not there are any pieces that would need to be, that are in disrepair need to be replaced or whether they would be replaced with vinyl. That's something we can find out. Yeah, I think that's, <laughs> oh, sorry, was that Laura? Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, the plan what is to um, cover the wood trim. And I think one of the requirements is that if there's any wood that's uh, failing or rotting, it would be replaced in kind prior to um, any covering with the vinyl. Um, and I think the only other question that I have then is, for example, we're looking at this door surround right now that's very ornate, and the door surrounds are the most decorative feature of many of the buildings in Barcroft. Um, if it's not part of the brick, is a big part of the design. Um, this being covered with aluminum or vinyl, and I'm seeing, for example, that fan design, is that going to just get completely like covered over or is it going to be mimicked? Like, I don't know how I can visual, like I, I'm not seeing a visual of what it would look like. And so um, I don't know if you can answer that question. And if not, then I think, I think the HLRB would like to see what it would look like. Uh, do you have an idea? Well, the idea is to cover it exactly with the same profile. And okay. uh, that has been done before and it's possible. You're going to see the same thing, but it's going to be just bad. Okay. That's something we should add in our notes and yeah. presentation. It's just so we're excited. Maybe I've <laughs> looked at them and maybe I've seen examples and I've turned away, so I don't know. But I, but it, I would, I would appreciate if you did have some examples, some photographs of other buildings or what it would look like. I think it would be good to know. But I think um, for the DRC members to know, and we'll repeat this to the HLRB, this is a scenario where um, this is not approving of a COA um, and we are a part of the review and we're trying to influence as much as we can with the design and the treatments of these buildings. And I think that there will eventually be a scenario where the HLRB will, in their discussion, determine what they are comfortable with, what they aren't, and um, would probably put this into some type of statement to the county board so that they know what the discussion was um, and where everybody's leaning. Is the planning done in the field, I guess? Or is it, I, mean, just kind of I think that they're going to first, they're going to come and survey exact uh, you know, mm -hmm. profile. And then they're going to fabricate the, the plan and then just so, yeah, that's uh, I think that the, the DC court actually has an example. You know that there is a project in White House that did the same. Um, so yeah, there are there are some examples. Um, we want to talk about the canopies as well. Those um, two options that we have. Yeah. This is uh, you know an older image, but I, it helps to show them together. Just let me know, excuse me, which one you'd like to see in larger format. I'll, I'll move around. So option one is on the left, and option two is on the right. Yes. I actually prefer option two to option one. That's more, it's a 
bigger statement, but I kind of like the her quieter statement about it too. I think the super one is What was that again, Andy? It's, I think the simpler one is better. I'm, okay. I agree with you. Okay. And again, these will only be applied if, I guess, if the waiver is not granted. It's not granted. So this is the same category we are going to apply to not to any candidate. So, um, get exemption for that. But and just case, to kind of. We, we want to be in. We have something proposed. And. You know, we've had we've had canopies. Um, there's actually canopies in Barcroft um, in some areas. Uh, they're more like part of on like the side entrances and stuff, but um, and they're held up they're, They protrude a little bit farther. They're held up by posts. Um, and, um, you know, I looked at this as it's kind of making me think of some of our commercial buildings that usually like to have awnings. To provide shelter for exterior seating and whatnot. Um, but we looked at it when we were talking to um, the project team here about the canopies, um, trying to have them be again thinking of how how could we reverse this if we needed to, and if they're going to be put into um, the brick uh, that you know we'll try and see if we can get it into the the mortar joints um, so that we're not damaging the brick. Um, those types of you know, things that we can try and do to minimize uh, the impact to the character defining features and materials. So prepared. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up. Yeah, <laughs> this is section seven. So, um, you know, different, this is phase two of the whole development, different architect and everything, slightly different style of the garden style apartments. But yeah, this is, this is the typical, and this is actually, more of a side entrance. Well, I guess it is the main entrance with the building address there. But um, yeah, this is the the standard that we see elsewhere in Barcroft or in Section Seven, I should say. I need to add that we don't have that decorative element around the door in the Section Seven. So you mm -hmm. see that the height of the door it's different. So that those two uh, cast iron. Columns are not so are not shocking actually to mm -hmm. support the, the entire uh, canopy. But in our design, there well we had to elevate the entire canopy to give to free that uh, you know that uh, look of the, the door trim, and that was uh, the whole thing was designed together. You see? So that was the intention. Yeah, to to reiterate, we definitely wanted to we needed to go with a different design because we were. Trying very hard to not uh, hide the the beautiful trim work there. This image has a different wall stocks. That's just sort of like sort of like a, a prior thought for that. These are placeholder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not gonna. We're not gonna do this. this one. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you insist. <laughs> no, 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 I did not. <laughs> okay, and I think the. Last things to talk about might be just the punctures for the vents on the rear of the buildings, but I don't really know how much discussion. I'm sorry, I'm I'm assuming there's not much discussion with that because I I can't think of where else where else will you put them. I think the rear is the best that we can try and go for whenever we're trying to put any new vent punctures. Um, and trying to, the fact that you've kept them away from the front, I think that. DHR has tried to kind of influence other projects in Arlington to try and see if they can get those on the rear. So any questions or concerns from the DRC on that? That sounds good to me. The rear sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have, I, that's, I think I, I think we got them all, unless there was anything else that maybe we had missed, or if the DRC would like to have some more follow-up questions on anything that was not the big seven items that we needed to talk over tonight. The canopy, so the, the rear canopy. Oh, the rear, the rear canopy. Oh, yeah. That, that part of the, 
Oh, the, okay, the DCS area. Or, or is that report whether they put in no matter what? Is this required? Yes, for all the entrances in the building. Oh, okay. So we could potentially get away with like storage units that are not used by any residents. But any unit entrance in any building per se will for sure. Yeah, there's the, there's the and just to clarify, so our, we're, we're in our application that we're not even showing the rear either. We're not showing right. We're, we're asking for exemption. Okay, I have my question too. Yeah, this is just shown for discussion. Just a bonus. Yeah. <laughs> can you do what um, Cynthia asked about, like with the light fixtures? Like, can you give us an idea of how many per building are going to need to be put on? Yes. Yeah, we'll come up with that information. Okay. Any other discussion? Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate your feedback. This has been a good discussion. Great. Thank you so much for coming in and um, providing the presentation and um, we will be in contact with you all about an overview of how this how everything went tonight and then um, and I will also keep um, some of the members on the team up to date with how the discussions are going with the Department of Historic Resources concerning the waiver possibility so that we can try and give the HLRB as much information as possible even though we don't have a crystal ball at this time. <laughs> Okay. Thank, Thank you. you all. See you. 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 See you.